related to the same uh, subject that I will be talking about this afternoon. So we have the say, a similar theme, at least for my preaching uh, for today. But I want to come before the Lord and we will just ask his blessing. Oh, oh yes, the usual thing. <laughs> Always what I forget. To turn the microphone on. There we go. Okay, let's pray. Our great God, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, that we can come refreshed on a cool morning, to come to hear your word. We thank you for the little ones that we see so happy and all sitting under the sound of your word this morning. We pray for them as they, their teachers teach them that you'd work in their little hearts too to bring new life. We pray for us too as we approach your word, help us to approach it seriously and to approach it, Lord, with an attitude of humility and willingness to learn as we sit at your feet, as it were, this morning. We pray for encouragement. We pray for blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to bring a message from the book of Genesis. I want you to open your Bibles to... Genesis chapter 29. The title of the message is The Pilgrimage of Jacob. Pilgrimage of Jacob. And we're going to commence reading at verse 15. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me what thy wages, sorry, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well favoured. And Jacob loved Rachel. And said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, my younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife. For my days are fulfilled that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to him and he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah his maid for a handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this that thou hast done to me? Did I not serve thee for Rachel? Or wherefore hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, It must not be done in, uh, so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week. And we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah his handmaid to be her maid. And he went in also under Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction. 
Now therefore my husband will love me. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. And therefore was his name called Levi. And she conceived again and bare a son, and she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. I want us to look over now to the prophet Hosea. Hosea gives us a very short commentary in chapter 12 on the uh, situation that we have seen here in the life of Jacob. Hosea is the book which comes straight after Daniel and the prophets. Chapter 12 and verse 12, reading from the book of Hosea, chapter 12 and verse 12. And the prophet under inspiration writes, And Jacob fled into the country of Syria, and Israel, that is the other name that God gave to Jacob, served for a wife, and for a wife he kept sheep. This short commentary that we have here by the prophet Hosea focuses our attention really on God's purpose in those tedious 20 years of Jacob's life, years really of hard labor, Years of servitude, years of humiliation. If you know anything about old Uncle Laban, you will understand what a difficult time that Jacob had during those 20 years. Jacob's own testimony bears witness to this when he complains to Uncle Laban, saying, This 20 years have I been with thee, thy ewes, and thy she-goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. You see, Jacob's responsibility was to look after his uncle's flocks, and he did so faithfully for 20 years. At the end of the time, he is recounting this particular passage back to Laban. He goes on to say, That which was torn of the beasts, I brought not unto thee, I bear the loss of it. Of my hand didst thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was in the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from mine eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in thy house. I served thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle, and hast ch thou hast changed my wages ten times. Except the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely thou hast sent me away now empty. God hath seen my affliction and the labor of my hands, and rebuked thee yesternight. And what were all of these years of service for? The Spirit of God says through the prophet Hosea, Israel served for a wife. doesn't pick up on any other details. That was the detail the prophet focused in on. And for a wife, he kept sheep. This is the key point. This is the thing which God would have us to dwell upon. The thing which he would guide our eye to when we're looking for that which is significant. 
in this story. Scripture interprets Scripture. So today we're going to be looking at typology, types or patterns which actually speak a spiritual lesson by way of allegory. What, what is an allegory? Does anybody know what an allegory is? Some brave soul? Tell us. Yes, Bob. That's right. It's a story that tells a spiritual truth. And it doesn't have to just be a story. Sometimes, as in this case, uh, we find that God actually uh, will teach spiritual truth through the history of some of his uh, patriarchs in this case. We know Jacob was one of the patriarchs. Now, we do have to be careful with typology because we are dealing with allegory. And it's possible to read details into it which are simply not meant to be there, but good products of a very fertile imagination. And there's been a lot of problems in uh, the history of interpretation of Scripture uh, through those who would have us to interpret things allegorically which are not meant to be interpreted allegorically. Still, the Apostle Paul does use allegorical teaching occasionally. And he does so, for instance, in the book of Galatians uh, where we see Hagar and Ishmael there being used and their lives, they were real people in real history in the book of Genesis, and they were being used in an allegorical way to speak, teach spiritual truth. And so what we, what rather are we to make of these 20 years of servitude for a wife? You know, the life of our Lord Jesus Christ is paralleled in the lives of these great patriarchs in many ways, particularly in the life of Joseph. But also we see here in a major way, we see the Lord's life is paralleled. These 20 years of humiliation while serving that he might obtain a wife. These 20 years of humiliation are really a picture of Christ's humiliation. Or perhaps they're better viewed not so much as a picture, but as an inevitable pathway that all believers must follow in the steps of their master. I want us to read the book of Philippians. Go to chapter 2, please. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. Speaking about our Saviour, verse 7 says, But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And so here we have the picture of Jesus reflecting upon eternity past where he was with the Father and they shared wonderful fellowship and love between the two persons of the Godhead. And then he comes to earth. And he takes on the form of a servant, it says, and he was made in the likeness of a man. So he comes from this position up here down to this position here and dwells in our midst among us. And then verse 8 says, Being found in fashion as a man... He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So he's taken this one step, now he comes even lower and he submits to death. 
something which he would never have had